Thank you. Um, Thank you. Minutes from November. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. A second. Are there any corrections or changes needed? All in favor? Eight minutes. Thank you. We do not have publics. Um, I sent out the 10 individual emails to folks to ascertain if there was interest in serving on the board in an interim manner with the possibility of <coughs> running to fill an empty position. There are two people from whom I have heard nothing. There are five who <coughs> have declined. There are two who may well be interested but have not exactly decided. And there is one person who said that if I were desperate, I could probably twist their arm. Um, I, I would, have that one person. I was too. going to say I am also aware of one other individual, but I have not. I can give you the update on that person. That um, I, the Molly gave me the name of the person, mm -hmm. and then I guess she asked Molly for some more questions, which is what prompted me to write and send the description that I shared to all of you. And then Molly said she was going to call me on Sunday. I gave Molly my phone number. I said she can call me anytime, ask any questions. She hasn't called yet, but she has expressed interest to Molly. So I don't know where that lies. I would have invited her to this meeting. I don't have her phone number. No, I don't know her, but um, she has kind of expressed interest multiple mm -hmm. times now. Mm -hmm. So um, well, let's hope. We will see where that goes. Mm -hmm. um, could we cast a wider net? Like, I don't if you know have that suggestions, like. yeah. um, or if you have ideas about folks who you think might know lots of people who would be... Have we ever put up like a flyer? Yeah, that's what I was thinking in terms of the library. I mean, how many people walk in through the library and be like, oh, huh, I would do that. Because if we only go through our own networks, we're essentially duplicating what we already have on the board, and there may be people who would be interested who just aren't connected. Yeah. I am absolutely open <clears throat> to alternatives if you want to suggest. Do you also want me to, like, make a plug for, like, interested in getting, like, a tomorrow night's event? Like, interested in getting, because mm -hmm. I will hopefully have a lot of school parents here tomorrow night. Mm -hmm because um, the movie has been announced in the schools. I think it was in the superintendents. It should have been in her weekly newsletter. Yeah. So we're, and the principal's gonna be here, so hopefully that will draw people. Mm -hmm. I what, think that would be an appropriate venue. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, what if, I will go home and I will create a little eight and a half by 11 poster and Oh maybe gosh. we could, maybe we, well, what I was going to suggest is if we put one by the circulation desk and if we put one in the window <coughs> here, just a single one, and in the course of the event tomorrow, if you had the opportunity to mention it, I mean, sure. I don't think it makes sense to print a bunch of stuff and hand it out. Um, no, but and we'll just I'm ask not talking among people, meeting right. people. Right, right. But if you, if there mm -hmm. is something publicly displayed, yeah, that's great. Then to refer to that, and we yeah. will go from there. Um, I will ask. I I will put on there to contact us through our official library trustees email. I mean, the one stipulation is that they have to be a happy resident. Mm -hmm. And a citizen. Yep. So I think that needs to be on there. Sure. Um, you just said something that worried me. You said our official email, like, was, am I supposed to be checking a second email that's, nope. like, 
Oh, it's one yeah. email for the whole board. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, no. It's not no. Like, At this point, one. I am, it's, Great. it's I, on yeah, my phone. I can show that's, you. That's, that's fine. I just was worried. I All I ever get are the, you need to do this security training thing. You need to do this. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. No. But anyway. Um, so I will do that and send it to Patrick so he can print it tomorrow and post Thank it you. as... No, that's a good idea. And I might ask people to be in touch by 12.31, if not before. 12.31 at the very latest. Um, because I would, ideally, it would be nice to wrap this up if we are going to, because even once we meet and do whatever, then we need to send, we recommend these people be appointed to the board, to the select beings, and they need to vote on it. So we need to keep their schedule in mind. It's not just us. And what I said to Molly to pass along to the person that she recommended was like, it's a really good opportunity to come on and see what it's like before you go for the run, right? Like you like understand what it's like first. Absolutely. That's what I kind of no, that's, say to people. Yeah. It's a selling point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It provides like the, the equivalent of the economic soft landing that we didn't go into a full-blown recession. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's right. Gas doesn't cost quite as much. Um, moving on to director's report. So I, the report that I sent out, it felt like, um, it felt skinnier than some. Uh, but in the meantime, between Thursday or Friday when I sent it out, um, I had a number of late breaking developments, one of which was that we, I believe I sent around one proposal from um, Copeland mm -hmm. engineering. engineering firm, uh, and then we received another uh, from a company named Gale, Gale Associates. So we now have two. I am doubting that anyone had time to review them, but if we, if we did, um, we could certainly discuss them, uh, and I can Ask They're not as long as what they sort of look like. You really yeah. only need to read the scope of the work. Um, Gail Associates was a recommendation from Mark Dunn, who's on the planning board and who's also an architect at UMass. And it is a firm that they use. It was my observation that their well, that their proposal was much more comprehensive or expressed a greater understanding of the work that we would like them to do. And what I don't know is, did Patrick tell both of them the exact same thing, or did the individual from Gale ask more probing questions in order to get that information? I would I would say that of the two, I mean the conversation was roughly the same with both individuals. It was just a synopsis of what has happened mm -hmm. to date and what we're hoping to do, and why. Um, the Gale proposal more thoroughly reflects the conversation that we had, so I, you know, can tell that the that the fellow was hearing and understanding what I was saying because it's it's reflected yes. here. I thought that was um, pretty clear. He, I would say. In that case, he actually had potentially less information because in the original one there was a discussion, there was a more thorough discussion of, because he asked of the, um, the warranty, the warranty claim, oh, okay. um, and some documents were sent on that. So To Copeland? To Copeland. Okay. Again, because he requested that. Yep. was not something that went to Gale, but as described in their, their scope of work, those kinds of, that would be part of their information gathering process if they, mm -hmm. if they were doing work, um, along with many other things. <clears throat> so, yeah. 
I'm two years off the board forgetting if things have changed. What is the minimum for um, that we have to go out to bid for? Have they changed that? I think it's done. So were you in, was this a discussion that, that you and I had with, with Carolyn? With Carolyn I thought it was in her ten, office? Ten. That, and she didn't really, she more or less said that, you know, we should go out and collect, you know, get our, um, our, our proposals and then I don't know if we had to run them by her or whatever, but that she was not saying, I don't remember a, thresh, a specific threshold that she gave us for this work. Not what we couldn't spend, but at what level do we, at what price do we need to follow the procurement right. process? And I think it might be 10. Um, I'm and sure we can check with Jennifer. Their proposal is 11. That's why I was like... Right, I know. Or as much as 15, depending on the nature of things. But my thought was, given that Patrick actually contacted more individuals and then did not hear from a number of them, that, and you've got almost... You have one at seven thousand and one at fifteen with the drone. That I would feel more comfortable getting at least one, if not two more. Try to get proposals from others. That would be my suggestion. Well, I'm just worried that we're going to do this and then find out we have to go through the procurement process. No, we'll find out. I mean, I can take this to Carolyn and make sure. That, yeah. But this is, we went to her and said, what is the process you would like us to follow? Because this is where we're at, having gone through the, you know, through the legal consultation with the town council. She basically, she basically put very few guardrails on it. She just said, go out and get your proposals. So that's what we've done. We can have her review them and make sure that they're, that they're legit. But this is essentially the process that she told us to follow. So. I think, though, it is worth, before soliciting more proposals, it's worth checking with Jennifer if what that threshold is whereby you need to follow a certain process. I don't know that we anticipated that it might run as high as this, and it may not affect things, but it would be unfortunate if, we went and got two more proposals and then found out the process by which we should have gotten them should have been different. Mm -hmm. So just a quick call to Jennifer tomorrow, of course, if you would of please. Of course, uh, yeah, of course. No, I know what Carolyn said, yeah. but Jennifer is also the official procurement officer and sure. it's just worth checking, I think. Yeah, of and course. Anyway, that would be my suggestion. I don't know mm -hmm. if I don't mean to monopolize the conversation. And if anybody else has comments, please express them. I, I just feel I know that Carolyn's the town administrator. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I also, as library trustees, don't want it to seem like we went around a process that, you know, is, you know, has been kind of. In all the times that I've been a trustee under David, um, he's really clear about using the procurement process. So it, it just, when I see a number like 11, it just, you know, I don't know if she didn't think it would be that high. I, I'm not sure if that was, if, it, if this is part and parcel of um, this being considered construction costs that we're still in, you know, still dealing with construction issues. Um, but I will double check with her and see if she says something different and, and, and Jennifer um, to see. Or even if she can give us something in writing. Like, I, I just don't want it to come back to us saying, well... That we didn't do the... Right. Follow like, the procedures, no. Yeah, that's my only concern, like, about Certainly. having a... Susan, Jess, did either of you have a chance to look at the proposals? I looked through them quickly, and it wasn't clear to me. Night and day. What's that? Well, it just wasn't clear to me. I just, I mean, I, I, 
I didn't really know what I was reading, and so um, it was hard for me to make comparisons of what each was offering. To my quick skin, they looked like they were covering similar ground at mm -hmm. very different price points, but I have a feeling that the devil's in the details, so. Yeah, I mean, same, I've never read anything like that, so I have no idea what it is I'm actually reading. Woodmark. Uh, since there's no more municipal building committee, oh, might that, that's disbanded. Disbanded. No kidding. Yeah, I found that out yesterday. That's the only I know that because I actually asked that question yesterday. I can. Uh, I will be happy to ask Mark to take a quick to look. look at them. Oh yeah, right? sure. Don't you think? I mean, I just feel like this is way, uh, way. Of, I can say one is written. One is clearly better written and clearer, but I don't know a lot about grooves. My my suspicion, and this is just about the companies, but that the that this is sort of a sole proprietor. The Copeland is sort of a sole proprietor situation where the guy that runs the company is the guy that does the work. Gail, I think, is a multi is yeah, yeah. like a larger multinational. And he might um, be really good. Company. The guy who runs the company right. just doesn't say as many words, right? right? Like we may yeah. not. We may just see well, a fancier presentation. Mm -hmm. I, I, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, all I know is what's reflected in this and, and based on the conversation. The conversations were fine. The conversations were roughly equal. I think what I'm getting from this is that this is going to be a more, a more thorough evaluation of the situation where there were a lot of things in the Copeland proposal that were sort of like, we're not, we don't do this and we're not doing that. And if you have a ladder, we'll get on the roof. But, you know. It, it didn't feel as, um, as as thorough as maybe, and again, we don't really want to keep um, bottom line is whether it's these proposals or some other proposals that we go out and get, we don't want to continue to get ambiguous information, so we, we do want something that is going to be thorough, that we know that the person yes. looking at this is going to be qualified to, to look, is going to communicate well in terms of what they give us, and I mean, if anything, getting a proposal that communicates clearly back what you asked in the first place reflects mm -hmm. well on that point. Um, because we really need something definitive to be able to then hand to whoever it is in town hall that, that needs to see it to then you know, support whatever decision we have to make, whether it's spending you know, money for a new roof or them saying, no, the roof is fine, proceed with you know, proceed with confidence that the roof is, is okay. Mm -hmm. So we just need, we need to feel like that whatever that we're gonna hand over to them, that we can stand behind. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have confidence in it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> back to the director's report, the rest of it. Yeah, uh, so the friends did approve. We, we have done another proposal for the year. Um, Joanne, when Joanne was on the board, she put in place a uh, procedure by which we would make a one one annual request for support for uh, programming, uh, and we did that. We went back to the request that we made the previous year and sort of simplified it and streamlined it so that we, rather than having very specific asks for you know a community reads uh, event, for instance that we would ask for more general categories for adult programming, young adult programming, and children's programming so that we have the flexibility and the leeway to make decisions as the year progresses. We don't have to know everything that we're going to do from beginning to end of year. Um, and the, the friends were supportive of that. They actually gave us more this year than, than last year. Um, it was 6120 last year and 6745 for, uh, for the current year. So that was um, very helpful and generous of the friends to, uh, to have their support. Um, another thing that came through after I sent this out was that we got numbers. It's not a formal proposal, but it was the math for a proposal for a quote that we solicited for a bulletin board to go out and call. I may or may not have mentioned that at the last question. No, it, it was in there. Yeah. Yeah, so you, he was, it was that you were going to ask him, or we yeah, had asked him. Yeah, the guy came out, took the measurements, got the got the general idea, um, and then I had to kind of pester them to get to get this for this meeting. Um, but the total for this was two thousand one hundred and fifty three dollars and nineteen cents, and it's a I don't remember exactly what the measurements are, but it's a sizable bullet board that would 
be in the hall there for uh, the community to come in and, and just sort of self-serve, um, hang up their, their flyers. Can you say uh, the total again? 2,153 and mm -hmm. 19 cents. So I don't know if that's uh, enough for the friends, uh, for the trustees to, to um, make a motion if you want a formal proposal for them, but I assume that the numbers will not change. That's labor and materials. Everything, yeah, and installation. That's a bottom line. Yeah. And where, um, how, I don't, we haven't discussed where we would want it to come out of. Like what is the general feeling? about where the money would come from? Well, first question is, are there still construction funds? There are, cover it? There, there are still construction funds. I don't have the balance for that, but there are construction funds, um, and those are available, other funds are available. Uh, I, my assumption, I don't know if I said this in the last meeting, but my assumption was that it would come from construction funds because it's still okay. a, you know, a, one of those sort of final details as we wrap up the furnishings for the building that um, if things had been less fraught when we did this in the first place, but we probably would have done it mm -hmm. in the first place mm -hmm. rather than waiting. So I'll make a motion yeah. to, to take the amount Patrick requested out of construction. $2,153.19. <laughs> out of construction funds um, for the bulletin board. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Great. That will help us to tidy up the, uh, the lobby as people enter the library, and that's uh, been yeah. something we've wanted to do for a while. It, will it be at, like just an open bulletin board or like one that has glass or? It'll just be an open, you know, walk up and put, right. you know, put a tack in it. And, Good. Um, hopefully, this is something that doesn't take a lot of staff time. Maybe a volunteer will, will be the person that organizes it, keeps it tidy, and takes away things that are expired or whatever. But right. um, yeah. Uh, excellent. Rolling right along, we just also today <coughs> got a um, got our annual guidance for our budget request for for next year. Um, the proposal will be due the first week of January, which is slightly later. I think I can't remember. But I feel like last year it was early December. Um, it was earlier than usual. This is maybe slightly later than usual, or um, or whatever, but it, it, that's good because it gives me a little more time to um, to work on this. And um, we are going to be looking at again increasing the staff budget for um, for specifically for part time help. I think we are going to be looking at um, expanding part time help at the circulation desk with either one one at least one or uh, two positions. We'll have to like see how that shakes out. In, the conversation with the staff about what's needed, when it's needed. Um, but I did also today get an email from uh, Audrey Swayton, who is one of the circulation assistants. She will be leaving the library as a regular weekly employee um, in January. So that puts her hours back on the table to then roll into whatever you know we're going to do going forward. Um, but we're still good for Saturdays. She was only here Saturdays, but we're still good because we still have Sue and um, Karen here on Saturdays for the time being, so that should be okay. Um, and is that it? What else do I have to tell you? That's primarily it. Just because Allison's not here, I'll put the CERC numbers in a spreadsheet and got the percentages and if the total number of patron visits between 2019 and 2023 increased by 12,296 which represents a 69.3% increase over the old building. Or did I say 71? That's all right. I, Close enough. Yeah. Well, no, I used a single decimal point, and that could just be rounding differences. But I thought that was pretty extraordinary. And where you have actual data for September, 
that's 160% increase in the number of people in September 23 over September 19, which is pretty significant. And I it think is. these numbers go a long way to yeah. justifying the addition of <laughs> staff. It's true. Uh, and, and there's also another set of data that I, um, that I was looking at at the time. Um, and I believe I also shared that with Phil at his request, but it was for circulation, and circulation is up significantly as well. It's up in the 30% range. But what that tells me, the fact that the two things, I mean, they're both up, but the, the, the fact that one is up so much more than the other um, indicates to me that by virtue of the fact that the live, this new building is what it is and what it offers, people are coming in and utilizing right. the building itself right. in ways. It's not simply that they're right. coming in and just borrowing books or having better access to the collection. It's everything else that the, that the facility offers that the old library did not. Um, so I think that's also very uh, striking detail. Mm -hmm. okay. I need the director's report because Patrick and I oh. talked about this. Um, <clears throat> Town Hall asked him why do you have all of these signatures on stuff? Because they apparently don't require them okay. on the invoices to be paid, right? Other departments do not, but again, that's because their oversight is different. I don't really know how it differs, but, um, but it came up in terms, because there's certain invoices that come from um, accounts that the town holds, like W.B. Mason, which we order from heavily. Um, which I get the invoices from Jennifer, I bring them to you, you review them, I get them back. Um, and sometimes because our process requires the signatures, that is a longer turnaround time than other departments have for authorizing bills. So the question was, you know, so Jennifer was asking, just being Jennifer, do, do you really need to do this? And I said, well, it's always been this way. This is just the process that I inherited. Go ahead. We did have this come up before though. Do you remember with the credit cards, we had this come up because the turnaround to get the money when we were charging things wasn't gonna fit the trustee signature, so we made like an exception for credit cards. It was a, it was a long time ago. Like, it kind of scares yeah, me. That I, we we like barely that. ever go that route, and there's, you know, there's- so, But I'm saying we have, yeah. like, this is not a topic unfamiliar right. to us. Right. That's all I'm saying. My, like, there's some there's history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and so, you know, in, in um, talking to Lynn about it, my, my personal preference was that instead of just, I think what Jennifer was saying is like, why do you have to do this in the first place? My point was, it's not really a problem or a bad thing to be doing this, but do is the number of signatures, I mean, if the number is sort of arbitrary, would it not be enough to just have it be the chair's function to authorize, review and authorize the bills. Um, and that might be enough, because obviously whoever the chair is, I'm in touch with them more frequently than, than everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. And it sort of depends from board configuration to board configuration, how often and, and um, how predictably I'm going to see people. So was it done as an oversight, a method of it, oversight? It's because our role is different than other boards, mm -hmm. right? Like. I, I would bet that I wouldn't be surprised if the school committee signs off on theirs. Because we are responsible for the library and we're responsible for, like, Patrick, we're Pat that's why we sign on them. But, but I but would. Why two? I mean, does two mean that they wanted someone else to know what was going on? Not oh. Just a chair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we changed it. We used to be three and then we moved it to two. We that changed was, it at one point. That would have been before my time if that was the case. Um, I, I actually would like to say, instead of, I think saying the chair is good, but say the chair's out on vacation, like, I, I actually think chair, a chair so or an alternative, or, like, yeah. I'm in favor of one. I mean, you could, we could even, I would have no problem just saying it, it should be signed by a trustee. Mm -hmm. that, Which, that works. Sure, that's less. Whoever's, I mean, yeah. I don't see any reason to make it unnecessarily restrictive. 
I, I agree because like in the case of this month, I didn't want to sign them because it was one right. that was to me. And if I were the chair, sure. then I wouldn't have right. signed them, right? Like, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if the town says there's no legal reason to have two, then... Well, that, that remains to be seen. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm just taking the feedback of, a, you know, another employee of the town that I interact with around bills. Perhaps, I mean, I just don't know the history of it. I don't know how, how it was put in place. Was it put in place by the trustees themselves? Was it put in place by some other party? Um, and well, then your call to Jennifer can be twofer, to ask about procurement and to say, to ask her, or maybe Linda Sanderson even. I think it's more a Linda and accounting question mm -hmm. because it's they're, they're the ones that won't process the bill, or it's, it's the accounting process, uh, department that will not process the bills without the signatures. So the question is, where do you have it in writing that you need to have these signatures? So that, that would be the question. Jennifer doesn't know. I mean, she, she doesn't. She's asking me why you have to do this. So I would, I would take it to the treasurer or the, to or or the really? account to see if somebody really? knows. If it's in the record book. I'm going to check the MBLC website too. Because, you know, thinking about what, maybe it's an MDLC requirement, not a town requirement. I would be very surprised. I know. It's, it's certainly not in mass general laws that affect public libraries. Right. No. It's not there. Right. It's not something that we report on either, so I kind of doubt that. Yeah, that I doubt it too. I'm just being I mean, if you want to look, fine. If you find something, I will, let Patrick yeah. and us So I will contact the... I don't know. Do you want us to like make, take a vote now so that in case it can happen, it happens? Like, since it seems like we're all in agreement. It's it's up to you. Pending it was, just, it was a random findings. conversation. It was a, you know a random conversation that came up in an office one day, and I just said, no, it's worth asking. You know, I don't think no, it's it any absolutely rush. is. So we can we can do that investigation and just wait till the next the next meeting. There'll be like one batch of bills or something. It'll be fine. I am willing to make a motion to the effect that should there be no regulatory or other obstacles, a single trustee's signature on bills to be submitted for payment will suffice. I second that. Is there any further discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Patrick, do you have anything else you want to mention? Is that a hint? Huh? Or a question? That was a question. <laughs> do you have anything else? I think that's it. No, no, no. I don't think I have anything else. Ms. Josanne. So I, um, I started a, a shared spreadsheet for folks that were on the, that uh, had volunteered to be on the committee for um, the planning. And we came up with, we kind of went through and thought about different people that use the library, different people that are connected to the library that we'd like to be represented on the strategic planning committee and this is the group i've handed you the document that lists it's basically a printout of our working document but the reason i'm sharing it is in case like we already heard from lynn who had some good ideas there's a writers group here and also karen knowles does esl so i'm gonna contact those two but does anyone have anything that you're looking at it and saying especially I'm thinking of Lynn and Susan because you weren't on that initial thing. You might be like, oh, you didn't think of this. And, or alternatively, if you're like, oh, I know this person on this group would be interested. One question I definitely had for this group was, <clears throat> I was unsure who our select board rep is. Mm. Isn't it Jane? No one's listed on the select I, board's website. I think it is Jane because I, um, unless it's been so long since that it maybe changed again, but I believe that at some point within the last year I ran into her and she 
more or less said, I'm, I'm your new rabbi. So I'll read to Jane. Okay. Yeah. It's her. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I was curious about that myself, and like I looked at the website recently, and no one is, I mean, no one's listed just on the, on their main page. So. No, there. Who's the chair now is Amy Parsons. Yeah, yep. it had been Amy mm -hmm. at one point. Okay, so I but will find it out. I just didn't know if it was something I didn't know and everybody else knew, so I checked with this group first. Otherwise, we're going to move forward with this list. You can also look at it tonight and email me. Like, don't feel like <laughs> you have to answer right now. But if you're like seeing any group that's left out or anything, I know you have Julia down there for the team group, but there is a tremendous amount of little person activity. So I put it. I actually put her in here. In the, oh, parents and caregivers. Okay. To call it. It's call it a suggested group contact person. That's more that Julie might be able to advise us on what right. who teams. Some good good teams would be. Yeah, we want some teams. Responses. So see, there's two columns. It says group contact and then yeah, the no, actual. No, no. Rep. What I was thinking of are the parents caregivers, and you do have them listed. Oh, okay. I was. I'm just thinking of the number of baby monsters. Yeah, that's what we it's definitely been, right. No, no, no. Yeah, we had those. Yep. In okay. Here. No, no, no. Um, and and Patrick added homeschooling parents, which I hadn't even oh, had yeah. thought of. Um, Are they still using the library on Saturdays? Um, I don't know about Saturdays, but there there are groups that come in at various times. Okay. So the, a group that um, has been coming on Wednesdays for a long time. I okay. may, in fact, try. I don't. I don't know that I can promise to do all of these because I I do work during the day. But if any of these times, like these folks meet, that is a time that I can be here, like I'm happy to like come and tell them what so we're them. doing in person and see if there's somebody that would be willing to do it. Um, I'll also email folks, you know, I'll, send, I'll be sending out an email, but I may make a personal kind of contact if I can. Or even I could give the staff like a script too, like, so like maybe a staff can I mean, go in. I think with something like that, because again, we don't we don't necessarily want to you know nominate you as homeschooling parent of you know that's to be representative. It might make sense to when this is sort of a little more you know solidified and finalized. Like we've got our constituencies that we want to reach out to. That we then make either distinct flyers. Attention, homeschooling parents. Attention. You know, parents of young children, we're doing focus groups or whatever the, the format's going to be, um, and target them that way, and then see what comes back, rather than just kind of like, you know, because a lot of the people that are coming, like the, some some of those families are folks. Some live in happy, some do not. You know, it's it's a mix of. Oh well, the reason I made suggested group contact is I yeah. was thinking that if we have somebody, we could at least connect with and say, could you bring this to your group? I sure. wasn't suggesting that they. You know, I was just trying to have somebody I could connect right. with that could bring it to the whole. But then group. it's but but again, that's like bring it to your group. There are many groups. There's not like any one monolithic group. There are many groups of these. You know, certain things here are like specific organizations. Some things yeah, on yeah. here are like just oh, types okay. of I see types what of you're categories saying. Categories of, of families I get and individuals. It. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Sorry. Took me a minute, but I got there. <laughs> So we'll be moving forward and we're going to have the meet in January. So we're going to really be moving forward quickly now with getting contacts out as, as possible. If, if something happens, we might have to push the meeting back, but hopefully we've got yeah, a good we'll try. start. Yeah. And that's my report. Thank you. Um, I distributed later than I said I was going to revised director's goals. And Patrick and I talked about this a little bit today when I was in, in um, as the label queen. And in addition to the question about meeting with staff members individually and how often, um, we talked about a few 
other things. And Susan made a couple of changes, and I made some additional ones on top of that. Rec that I, my goal was to recognize that all of the things are not necessarily within Patrick's control. Mm -hmm. For example, the door, which has now been a three-year process altogether. And so coming up with a time frame once that is completed made sense to me. That's number one under management. Mike, can I just speak to that? Absolutely. Like the, to the, any of those? So the, uh, obviously the, the, the sentiment behind it is, is totally fine of, of, you know, because that's what we all want to do to get this system up and running. The, the point, the thing that I would say about it being anything specific as one month is that there are a number of questions here, aside from like the mechanical function of the door, there are a number of questions that we don't have any answers for as far as what is the software system that we'll, we'll be using to use this, to schedule it, to provide the access and for people to make reservations. Does it even exist? I, I don't know, because we haven't, we've had zero communication, um, or very close to zero communication with the folks that are overseeing this project. So beyond the reassurances that it is coming, that's all I have. And so I don't really know how easy it will be, whether the door functions or not, to implement this within the timeline of one month. Because there are other buildings that will be tied in with us, and it's, again, it's a, it's a town-wide issue. Yeah, Joe. So is, so this is a, something maybe I didn't understand. I thought that they physically just make the key. I, you know, the, the, the door work with the key. I didn't know that they also provide software. Is that like part of their I'm thing? Inferring. I think this has I'm changed since you were last involved with the building. Yeah, so in, the, in what has essentially been happening, the reason that those buttons on the outside of the building do not work uh, is because they cannot work without the software, without the full functionality of, of the doors being enabled. At this point, the only thing that we can do with the doors is literally stick a pin in the panic bar to hold it unlocked or unlocked. It cannot function in the way a normal door would lock. Um, so it is a matter of the fiber optic network being completed. We're told that that is more or less done. Equipment being installed in the North uh, Hadley Fire Substation. I understand that it, that is done or nearly done. Uh, that, and that is where my knowledge of this situation ends. I don't know anything else about it. I don't know anything about the system itself, what the training, you know, the barriers to, to, to using the system will be. I literally know nothing uh, about it beyond that. I think initially we thought we were putting in a standalone system. And then shortly after the town came and said, oh, no, we're doing this whole town-wide thing. No, they brought Joe in when I, when I was on the board still. Because okay. I, I sat through Joe. I think that, I know why I was interested in this as one of the goals, and I think for me, I was thinking that regardless <coughs> of how that darn door works and whether the town's actually gonna live up to its three plus year commitment of having our front door work properly, um, that we still needed to find a way, if they weren't going to do it, to let people use the space as we promised. So After hours, though. After hours, that's as promised. Like, that was what we promised, that we would, that right, when we built promise, the library, we yes, said. But the promise was predicated on, a, this is not like science fiction, it was predicated on a system that is just a normal 21st century access system. <laughs> And there's really no explanation for, for why it's taken three years. That is not on us. So the, I understand, again, the goal of providing access. And, and this is where we sort of ran into it. Let me just finish. This is where we kind of ran into like a bit of tension with a previous iteration of the board where our attempts to make 
reasonable good faith efforts to allow people to use this room outside of normal hours received pushback because it wasn't considered quote unquote fair. But what else can we do? You know what I mean? I mean, there's really little, very little we can do other than to accommodate what we are able to accommodate and deny what we can until there is a perfect solution, mm -hmm. which is what the te what the trustees promised. So you didn't let me finish because what okay. I was going to say is I'm not actually comfortable having it as a goal <laughs> because I feel like it's so out of your, like maybe we leave it as a goal, but if it's that dependent on like so many other people, it feels like, it feels like it's kind of unfair to Patrick. I think the way I approach these goals is best case scenario. Are there going to be potholes along the way? Absolutely possible. I don't think these are fixed. I am not suggesting that we carve them in granite. It's a word document. It can be changed. I think as, you know, as soon as Patrick identifies an obstacle, as long as he notifies us that this is going to have an impact on my ability to do this that we can then modify the goal to accommodate whatever the unforeseen thing i i don't see this as i think that there's nothing wrong with the goal because i think i think this is the year this should be the year it should be should be, should where be. This comes online, um, and I think you know, I like operating on that assumption, I think it just should be should be phrased in, in such a way that it's more like as soon as it is feasible for this to go into effect, that it will be put into effect with all due speed, you know, mm -hmm. all reasonable. Or speed. even if you put a caveat at the very end that says, you know, all goals are subject to change. Yeah. According to circumstances beyond the director's control. Yeah. And normally these are not things that I really would spend a lot of time worrying about. Right. But because of the nature of the transition that we're going through, where as up to half of the board is going yeah. to be is going to be new folks that yeah. are not going to have any context for these things. It's at that point it's it's actually foolish of me to assume that other people are going to be able to read between the lines of what has gone on. That's right. um, I and so I, I, that's why I want the wording to be mm -hmm. um, what it should be for the, for the benefit of those folks that have not been here. So then are you comfortable with the way it reads now, Patrick? Which, that, that, that particular item? Or yeah. The yeah. I'm okay with it as long as it, the, the, the language about one, you know, the specificity of one month is, to me, is I can't really get behind that because I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel comfortable with it. And some, a, some literal minded person will look at that and go, well, you didn't meet your goals. One month, said one month. Well, why didn't you say something before? So that's why I think it should just say something a little bit more, you know, that's just whatever would be, you know, or something that says like some reasonable effort to put this into effect as soon as the system is fully functional. Operation. And if you if you want to to you know obviously it goes without saying, but if you want it to be explicitly stated that I will be reporting on that, you know, month over month to mm -hmm. express where we are. So as soon as there's an update, something to report on. I mean I think it's actually been on the bill on my director's report since um, prehistoric times that it, it says so access hardware, no hardware, update. Right. It's, I mean, it's been that way for, for right. a no, long it's time. A, so it's, long, it's part of the template. So long that I don't even <laughs> notice that it's there anymore. Um, yeah. And my only other my only other comment about the whole document was against the specifics of the of communication during number two. Director shall establish and implement a schedule of once per month, all okay. staff meetings and meetings with individual staff members once each month. Um, and I think I've spoken to this previously, and I can again. But the way that we're the way that we're working this out, which I think is most reasonable, because I think there is a differentiation in terms of. A staff person that is here full time and has a greater degree of 
responsibility within the library on, on various levels than someone who is here on a more um, limited basis, essentially, who does, for instance, someone that does like circulation work on a Saturday. You know, I don't have as much to communicate back and forth with you know someone that's here on that level as I do with you know, for instance, the two full-time staff members that are covering mm -hmm. youth services and adult services. We have a lot to talk about all the time. And so what we were trying to do, what I have put into effect since the summer is a set of meetings. We are doing staff, all staff meetings where all staff are invited. I can't really force people to come on a day that they don't otherwise work because they have other jobs and other responsibilities. But we put it out there that we're having an all staff meeting every other month. Um, we can always have impromptu meetings, either individually, just one-on-one -on -one if someone has a concern or if I have a, I have a concern. Um, but I think having everyone together, the option or the opportunity to have everyone together every other month, I think suits the, the need. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's overly onerous, and I don't think it's too big of an ask. Um, and then I meet monthly with Julia and Sue to talk about what I would consider more to be management issues. Um, and in addition to that, we are now have increased the number of meetings that we will have as a sort of check-in. If they're not like review, they're not performance based, they're more just like, how are you doing? What, you know, what are, are you having difficulties with something? Is there something you'd like to be doing more of? Like, what, what do we need to ch talk about since the last time we did this? And we're doing that instead of a, an annual thing, we're doing that twice a year. So we're starting that process now, and we'll do it again in the summer. My boss checks in with us all the time. And I, I almost wondering if the word informal check-in needs to be in there instead of meetings with individual staff like informal check-ins with, with, with staff members? I, I think it would, I, what I would prefer to see is rather than a, a, you know, a, you know, this kind of numerical thing, like you're gonna meet one time per month, whatever, that there, there be a reasonable and you know, thought out schedule of meetings that like, you know, mm -hmm. fits the need rather than just sort of like a, well, if it's once a month, why isn't it two, two months, why not four months? There has to be a rationale behind why you're doing it and what goal you're trying to meet. What, what if a goal said Patrick will establish and follow a schedule of yeah. meetings for the staff? Mm -hmm. Like, so this way it puts in your hands and the staff's hands what you want, but then we, there is a schedule and we could see the schedule if we wanted to see if he's meeting his goal. I don't have a problem with that, but when we first started talking about that, this, there was a fair amount of demand, I will say, but I'm not, I don't mean it in the pejorative sense, to have metrics or quantifiable. I am perfectly comfortable with, I mean, I do think it is important, and I think Patrick has already done this in terms of setting up a schedule. I think it is also the case that with Sue now working, Sue the assistant director working on Saturdays where part-time people are involved, that she can and actually does serve the function of being a method of transmitting information to them, which makes, to my way of thinking, a lot more sense than necessarily putting all of that on Patrick. Mm -hmm. I think sort of delegation of responsibility in the way that Julia and the way she works with Emily, particularly in the children's room, the way the information flows that way. So I do think it makes the greatest amount of sense for Patrick and Julia and Sue to meet regularly, but as I understand it, the last regularly scheduled meeting with them had to be shifted because there was a medical appointment. And those kinds of things are gonna happen. And I wouldn't want to see Patrick's review, 
lowered the quality of it lowered so the, because of accommodating those kinds of things. I just want to say one thing again before we go too far down this road because there was a I think that there was an inference made in the response by staff to the categories you know the, the review that was done by staff to say do you want more of a thing do you want less of a thing is it just right and where people were saying they want you know more communication I think there was a, an inference there that more communication means they want a meeting, like they want to go to a meeting. Those and not that's not necessarily what people <laughs> want. They, they simply want to be in the loop on things. And there are many ways to communicate mm -hmm. that, don't, you know, that don't take up a regularly scheduled hour of your time, particularly in a time that you don't necessarily. Sorry, what were you going to say, Joanne? No, I, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I'm, I'm like processing it all, but I. I want to give a little pushback to the fact that if we're asking Patrick to give a schedule, that is a metric, right? Mm -hmm. Like that is a measurable yeah. metric. It's just that we're not determining the metric. We're letting the manager determine the metric and then live by his metric, right? But there is a metric if he develops That's fine. a schedule. Yeah. I don't so, have, I don't so that have if a we came to that. a meeting and somebody, a trustee meeting, and somebody said, Patrick, what is the schedule of how you meet with people? Patrick would then be able to like. Tell people like here's the schedule and he could show it to us and back it up so i think we're just i think what i was suggesting was having a metric but putting the metric in in the manager's hands mm -hmm. who knows the staff but having patrick accountable to if somebody That's asks fine. you to say the metric and again if they, but if i just they, want to clarify that was nope. my like big thought it, process yeah, of the goal it, but if this doesn't if this doesn't address whatever the staff concern was, then it's going to be reflected again in the, in the review, whatever format the review takes. If it measures that, it's going to show up again. Well, that, that didn't seem to solve anything. They're still saying more communication. And then we'll have to drill down deeper and figure out, like, what do you mean by communication? Like, what, how do you want to communicate? Like, what is it you want more of? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm, I'm already trying to get at that. I point, don't think you know? that question, like, to me, that question should should have a follow-up like i don't get enough emails i don't get enough. like like that doesn't sound like it was a measure like i just think it's important to have a communication plan with our staff and i i just think if you lay one out that's important to then the how board, about if right? we just like if we have the metric of how you're meeting or communicating with your staff then if we just eliminate the once per month on the first line of that and the once each month on the last line the director shall establish and implement a schedule of all staff meetings and meetings with individual staff members. Simple enough. And implement, establish and implement. Maybe. It says that. Oh, okay. It I didn't. That. I didn't hear it. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, that's there. Were there any other items, Patrick, that Those are you the were not? That, uh, everything else, I think, is is. Okay. Then. So just for the minutes, um, are these going to be revised and brought to the next meeting, or can we vote on them as, like, as amended? As amended? As amended? Yes. yes. Okay. So I make a motion to accept the um, <laughs> the director's, the director's goals, goals for FY twenty four as amended. All right, I, I need to know what, what specifically what the amendments are then. I think she has it written. I will. You have it written yeah. down. Yeah. Okay, great. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, thank you. Okay, doke. Um, I think we've already heard the Friends of the Library update. Um, since our liaison to the Friends is no longer a member of the board, Patrick, I will ask you if this is something we can let slide for the rest of this fiscal year. I think it's perfectly reasonable. I don't think there's anything that, uh, I'm not going to say it's not a good idea to have this, but I mean, in the past, you know, 
uh, Maureen would be at meetings and we would just kind of tag team it in terms of there wasn't any kind of clear, clear demarcation of what she said versus what I said. We just kind of like tried to fill them in and that was good. No, I mean, I think <clears throat> if we had a full complement of folks and yeah. then I think I'm just saying it's not something that they're going to be that they're clamoring for saying like you, you've let us down they're, they're perfectly happy to hear about it from from me as much as anybody else well i will write to sharon and let her know that we have had changes and provide some level of assurance that we'll make every effort to have a liaison after the next town election Does anybody have anything else? I just want to make a plug if we're on TV to say that um, tomorrow night we have an event here. Um, it's a screening of the movie The Right to Read. And um, in 2022, 66% of US children did not meet the standards for reading proficiency. And Hadley has a grant for the science of reading. And we are lucky enough to have the principal of the elementary school, the reading specialist at the elementary school, and Professor Mara Breen here to discuss the science of reading and what students and families in Hadley can expect. And that will be at 6.30 in this very room. I just want to mention one thing that I realized when I went back and read the minutes. Um, there was a reference last time to boards being asked to adopt mm -hmm. this code of conduct. Well, I haven't heard anything. Okay. And until we are asked to do so. I'm good with my conduct. Well, I think our conduct has been altogether cordial and collegial and Anyway, does anyone have anything else? Thanks for. I'd forgotten. Yeah, yeah. That I was the one who brought that up. So. No, that's. <laughs> Thanks for calling up on it. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I would be delighted to entertain a motion Thank to you. adjourn. Second. All in favor.